run backwards, don't get shot by sniper. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's see if we're going now. Um, yes, here it comes. New stream coming through. There we go. Yeah, it's back. Okay. I can confirm. <laughs> I right, can't see chat. it. Oh. Sometimes uh, teething issues. Yes, I I did learn stuff about computers. Um, <laughs> so uh, okay, so we were talking about stuff down here, just around uh, making some points when we thought we were streaming but we weren't um, just around the fact that um, you can uh, it's it's interesting of finding a way to motivate the player to move forward um, and finding a way to you know make what they're doing mean something uh, it's and, and to to really reward the player with something once they've actually completed these goals if you see what I mean yeah. Um, yeah. so I think the um, and, and it's especially challenging in a short mod um, but uh, you know, there, I think there are ways to do it. I think it's definitely worth having more of a conversation about that um, with other people and see what their opinions are about uh, the best ways to motivate the player. Um, I mean, really, in a short mod like this, the best way to motivate the player, in my opinion, the reward is the new, the next section. You know, progression is the reward. Uh, you know, maybe a new weapon, but aside from that. Um, okay, so moving to the next section, I was saying about the um, sniper. And this sniper area is a bit different, and I quite like it in the fact that um, you can. Uh, it, it's not a classic sniper situation where you have to approach from a distance. It's stopping you from getting to the far door, really. Um, and he's actually reinforced that by putting a padlock on the door, which makes it more fiddly when you get to the other end. So you have to waste time and get shot, basically. So you're forced to. Well, you're not forced to. You could, but probably make a run for it and take some pretty harsh damage. But um, well. Okay. Um, <laughs> there you go. Right. But. Okay. So, yeah, no problems there. Great little bit. Gameplay. Absolutely fine. Let's yeah, move I like, on. I like the fact that when you first walk up there, the, the combined sniper shoots the can in front of you. Yeah, Just definitely. You know, it's, uh, like, there's a threat there and you're going to have to deal with it. Yeah, exactly. And that is something that, that Sam does pretty well here. And it's actually a common mistake in, in a lot of modding is, is there's a rule that basically says the player should never get damaged. And unless it's by their own screw ups, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, I think I think there's a few points when he falls into a trap where you don't get that. But um, I've played through some other mods whilst researching for this recently. Um, it was a common problem in Sniperville. That I yes. Did, uh, on Philip's channel, <laughs> a couple of weeks back. Yeah. Oh god, that was that was quite an old ville, wasn't it? If I remember, that, that was, was a long the first time ago. One. Yeah, yeah. Oh really? Like three years ago or something. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, there was plenty of points in there where a sniper, or even two or three snipers, would just shoot you in the back and you'd yeah. die instantly. Um, and uh, I played a mod yesterday, what was it? Oh, I was, I was looking around for the mod and played Silent Escape. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and there's so many bits in that where you open a door and there's just a combine standing there blasting you in the face. It's just like, God. <laughs> um, it just gives you no warning at all. Anyway, so it's yeah. just an interesting point. But yeah, definitely telegraphing what's about to happen and letting the player know. Now, we're about to enter the first combat arena, um, mm. and this is where things get interesting. Um, can you check the stream for me and just make sure that's still working? Yeah, it's still up. Okay, great. Um, so uh, this is where things get interesting for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat, because I want to really take a look <laughs> at this. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to gob mode it, and then I'm gonna, we're going to take a quick look at the arena in um, no clip. Right, and just take a sort of a fly around. But let's just walk through it and play it. So I'm walking into the arena and so I've got combine right in front of me with no, you know, barriers between me and them. Um, and so I'm forced to kind of move around, yeah, and move pretty quickly uh, in order to avoid getting shot and uh, and to avoid. You know, taking damage and to, to take care of it. Now, the interesting thing about this arena, and it's kind of continuing through the mod, is. Um, sorry. Okay. Is that. I'm taking while fighting. This is isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, right, first of all, I think I counted, and there's something like 12. I'm not sure what the balance is like with the, the heavy. 
gunfire, so I'm just going to wait and clear these guys out. There's something like 12 or 13 combine in this area, right? Um, including the ones up on the... Uh, I don't know why I'm worrying. I'm on God mode. I can take, take, take all the time I want. Um, it's just funny, isn't it? You get caught up in it. Right. Um, yeah, I'm, I really like this arena. Just because as you enter it, you have a couple of options about which way you want to go. It's it's a very... Uh, what's the word? Not linear. That's the opposite of what I'm trying to say. It's a very free-form arena. You get, you get given lots of choice when you enter it. Yes about how you want to engage and depending on which way you go the fight plays out slightly differently that's uh, true the problem i have with it is it that could. again with the whole story thing is that i feel like a lot of these spaces for combat and uh this can be said about almost every area in this map pack is that a bit of scripting or introduction for each area would go a long way but it, as it is you just feel like you're walking into a space and there's just enemies in it it feels like a quake mm -hmm. map for most of it <laughs> We just yeah. go in and clear it out, and then go to the next area. Yeah, definitely. So that's all right. So, so, so what I wanted to really focus on. So what I'm going to do is do no clip, right? And just take a look at this. Um, now, let's look at this from a tactical perspective, right? Where, where, what are the combine trying to defend? They're trying to defend the 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 the, the shielded doorway, and then they're also trying to defend the the switch at the top. Yeah. So yeah. to me, having the combine immediately appear directly in front of you where you know you can just blow them away immediately um, doesn't offer a huge amount of challenge to the player um, to me you know the player should be battling to try and reach the important points of the map right rather than simply just going toe-to-toe -to -toe and uh, killing and with the shotgun it makes it even easier because it's literally, you know, one or two blasts per, per combine, right? Yeah. Um, and so what we end up with is a combat model where it's simply just, as you, as you said, throw a ton of soldiers at the player and then scatter crates around the place. And essentially what you have to do is you do a dance around the map, you kill the, you kill the bad guys, and then you, uh, you pick up health as you, as you go to try and save yourself. And yeah. it's not hugely challenging. There's not a, a lot of tactical, you know? Um, thinking going onto it, other than simply doing that that dance that we've all become quite, you know, the sort of the strafe circling yeah, yeah. thing. I, I think what would have really helped here is that I, I think the actual design of the arena is fine, yes. and the fact that there's an initial wave of combine coming at you is fine. Um, it just kind of goes back to my original point about there needs to be kind of more introduction of extra elements into the arena to make it feel like it's evolving as you're playing through, because as it is now, you're exactly right. You walk in, kill everything, and then just carry on to the next mm -hmm. area, like you just mentioned. Yeah. But like, if you killed the initial wave of combine, and then perhaps a door gets blown open, and some come out, or a drop ship drops off a whole bunch more, which I think actually happens, but you don't see it. Yeah, it does. Like it right is there. The back of the arena. And it's so actually more stuff yeah. like that to make it feel like it's actually alive and is changing and reacting to the player would really help here. Yeah, and I think I think the other thing I noticed as well is that the combine don't really make use of the higher and lower levels. I mean, we've got some that spawn up here at the, at the beginning. Sorry, up and up in the initial higher um, level, but you know, across yeah. across the sort of the, the uh, you know the raised area across the middle of of the arena, the combine don't yeah. use it. And if they did, then you'd kind of be fighting on, fighting on several different levels. Or like, for example, you could have one on the on the the walkway that goes across to to the building top level where the button is so that the players yeah, having to look up and down at the whole time and yeah. you know what I mean and really keep their wits about them um, personally and I also have a bit of a, a, a thing about um, the combine work best in my opinion at a distance um, they are shooting enemies they're not melee enemies the zombies work best at you know close range because what they're trying to do yeah, is clo totally. close down your space and when they reach melee range then you're in trouble so you're the gameplay changes in the fact that what you're trying to do is get away from them and trying to create space for yourself okay as the player the combine work best at a distance so the ones up on the walkway at the top work really well because they're you know you have to aim and fire and you have to move as well um to simply throw combine at the player and have them point blank range um, is a problem in my opinion and doesn't and, and doesn't get the best out of the combine. Even shotgun troops, I would 
try and keep them separate close obviously because that's where they're, mo they're the most dangerous but yeah, yeah. but not not have the ability to go completely toe to toe with them and i think if you play through half-life 2 and any of the, the episodes it's quite often that the player is very much separated from the combine you know i think it's only towards the end when you get into the citadel of half-life 2 and you get the super gravity gun that they really come just charging at you if you see what i mean anyway just some thoughts yeah totally and but I don't know I if you agree with that. That's again down to the player's personal playstyle as well. I think uh, there's something to be said about designing for lots of different playstyles as mm -hmm. well. So if the player wants to get right up close and personal, then you should consider that as well. It's, uh, uh, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a tough balance because yeah. I'm, I'm amazed that like, whenever I see a demo or a video of someone playing through one of my levels, it's just like, I never thought someone would do that. Oh, it's God, it's broken. unbelievable. <laughs> it's, I've, I've, I've honestly seen players th do stuff and I'm just like, what? the hell why would you do that you know <laughs> what yeah, possessed it's, it's you it's constant it never ends yeah uh, exactly yeah it's i think it's very important to kind of cater to as many different play styles as you can mm. the, the trick is not diluting your map in doing so <laughs> yeah no i understand um where you going going with that so into the next area um one thing i thought was interesting about this area was we have this sort of uh, stairway here which means I can run up as the player and I can simply just blast my way through. Once again, point blank range, two combine, dead. Yeah. Um, with the steps going up, I think this, this would have much been much much better with a ladder somewhere along the way because that that gives the player a pause to sort of go, crap, can I get up there in time? You know, without taking significant yeah, yeah. damage. And um, I think. You know, you then would have had a sort of more interesting playstyle where you have to clear out the top level with grenades or something like that before you head up there. If you see what I mean, so have the combine on on the balcony already when you move into the area. Yeah, yeah, I see. I don't know if you're there. Are you there where I am? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, okay, we should probably explain yeah. to people that Darren can't see what I'm seeing because I, uh, what you're seeing on the stream is delayed. Um, so he's having to guess what I'm doing <laughs> by what I'm saying. <laughs> I think Twitch has gotten better with delay. It's about 25 seconds. That's pretty good. Not, not bad at I'm all. Reading it correctly, so yeah, it's yeah. not too bad. Gotcha. So okay, moving to the next area. Um, I guess we can talk about just the look of it and the detailing. Um, there's some areas of the map that are really basic, especially in the second map, I think. Um, mm. But you know, the first map is the detailing's great. I think it looks good, and it's you know, I mean, as you said, it's not a plausible area, um, as in the the architecture and stuff like that isn't plausible, but. It's not, you know, it doesn't stand out as being unreasonably undetailed, if you see what I mean. No, I mean, yeah, you're totally right. It's a great looking map. I just never felt like I was in a real place while playing it. It yeah. felt like uh, a series of engineered gameplay spaces rather than a real environment. Yeah. Which I think really hurt the level in the long run. Gotcha. I just I can never felt immersed into the environment. I was just kind of, oh, look, here's a cool combat area. And uh, it's obviously been designed exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> this I think is a great example. This area here you're looking at right now. The chopper? Oh, so you mean just, just the room? Whole, yeah, this yeah, whole cool. space. Yes. It's like it's obviously an arena for the chopper. Yes. But it just it just doesn't look real at all. It's, there's something very artificial about it. And this is yeah. something that Sam's, all of Sam's maps kind of feel this way. Yeah. I mean, I like, so I like the kind on. of... I like seeing hyper reality you know so it, it, it it's it's sort of made up of plausible stuff but it's uh you know it's, it's kind of crazy extra you know extra real if you know what i mean yeah, so yeah. i can kind of you know i kind of like this architecture and it, it's i mean i always say that half-life 2 isn't set in the real world you know it's kind of it's it's cartoony to a certain extent um and uh and, and shouldn't be considered to be... You know, people shouldn't try and aim to do high, like, proper realistic. People should think more in a cartoon type level uh, with regards to map designing, in my opinion. Uh, for Half-Life 2, specifically. Um, so, while those helicopters kicking the crap out of me, um, I think what I might do is just knock down the, the volume on the game a little, just because uh, I'm finding it hard to focus on what I'm talking about. There we go. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's blaring in my ears a little. Okay, so the, the the one issue, if you noticed when I came into the arena, um, the chopper comes in while you're still up on that higher level. I was going to mention that, yeah. Yeah, which yeah. means you can drop back into the room and just hang there. I mean, you can't do anything. You're stuck there, essentially. To me, there should, the trigger for the chopper should have been down in, in the floor here so that you had to drop into the arena and couldn't go yeah, back. I agree. Um, yeah, I yeah. So that's, you know, a thing. 
<laughs> so what's interesting about this is is I can totally see what Sam was trying to do with this arena. And what's interesting as well is that in prior arenas, we've had crates everywhere. Here, on this on this chopper arena, there's there's only like one, I think. Or oh, there's a few in the uh, in the container, isn't there? If I go around the back there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, it's 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 kind of light, and it's you know, it's a pretty heavy fight, and. Um, I think the the other thing is obviously the placement of the rockets, and that's done on purpose, definitely, because if you can just camp by the rocket bin, then there's not really much fun to be had at all, is there? Um, so I totally understand where he was going. Whether I would have had the play go up a ladder to reach it or not is a different question, because um, I think the trick with ladders is that, you know, they are... Um, you know they're tricky things. You can get stuck on them, and you know, and they cause a bit of panic in the player, in my opinion. Um, it's a, it can be a bit frustrating if you get stuck on a ladder. If you see what I mean. Um, there's also the the choice to use um, physics props as the as the planks that lead to the, uh, the container that has the rockets <laughs> on top of it. <laughs> which yeah, equally... I've had a couple of instances where the helicopters actually blown those planks to pieces. You had to do a yeah a hop, skip, and jump to get to the <laughs> rocket bin. <laughs> <laughs> now, on, on, I mean, there's also the, the, you know, the choice to to bring in combine soldiers while you're having the battle with the chopper. What do you think yeah. about that? I think it's a cool idea, but I don't think the arena design really works with it. What what I would have really liked to see here, and maybe this is nitpicking, I don't know, but if you kind of go through the arena, the chopper attacks, then you have to walk up into some of the buildings around the arena to get to the rocket bin and you fight combine in there mm. rather than have them come into the arena here while you're fighting the chopper at the same time. I do think you need to, uh, both of them have very different play styles like, as, as an enemy yeah. uh, and I do think that you need to, and if you if you remember in Half-Life 2 there's that section where, I think I think it's during the, um, the, the, the root canal section where you um, have to fight your way, you know you've got the chopper attacking you and you have to dodge your way through an area and then there are combine kind of in there, but you never have a situation, I think, where the chopper is shooting at you and the combine are shooting at you at the same time. I think I yeah, think yeah. it's always it's all you're always covered from the chopper when you have to fight the combine, and you do have to make a choice about moving out into the open to fight the combine at that point. But you do always have cover, and you have the choice of staying within that cover, and that's what makes that section quite interesting. Is that you know I want to dive across, but there's a window, and the chopper can shoot me through it. If you see what I mean. Um, yeah. Which I think is always good. The thing about this arena is that because the buildings are quite high, there's only there's limited angles that a chopper can actually get a line of sight on you. Yeah, so gotcha. if you kind of play behind the crates, you can kind of take out the combine in relative safety. Yeah. So yeah, I'm thinking maybe that's what Sam was thinking with this arena, like have certain hidey holes that the player's kind of safe from the chopper in just yeah tall I mean uh, you do have the open container which you could sort of if you could make your way over there then then you know you could sort of stay in there and, and, and fight away without the chopper getting to you I guess um, it just doesn't I, I, it just wasn't a natural place for me to go if you know what I mean in my brain maybe that's just my brain but I think from a design perspective it, it didn't feel like where I should be heading if you see what I mean yeah. um, I'm also not really a fan of restricting player movement really at all I mean that I guess that comes from my uh, quake heritage but I always <laughs> prefer being able to kind of run around wherever I like and engaging wherever I like and uh, well I think it's the, it's the take where the safe areas are it's the nature of the, an arena of arena combat is it should be in in loops you should be able to move through through loops of uh, of, of sort of pathways through the arena um yeah. the whole time uh, which is why that figure of eight kind of uh, format works so well because there's always somewhere to move on and, and everything can be flanked and it's a tough thing to design sometimes to get it right yeah totally oh you're right though figure of eight is uh yeah the golden standard <laughs> i just found a magnum and i'm not sure if i ever found that before it was on a table. Interesting. Um, just before the, the you get onto the hunter fight. Ah, the hunter I fight. I think I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I always use the magnum and the crossbow as kind of bonus weapons in my maps. Um, because, yeah. and actually, I don't really like, and it's an interesting thing to point out about the pistol. I don't like the pistol. I think the pistol's a bad weapon. It's like a sniper rifle, right? So the player can just hang back, oh, yeah. hide around a corner, and pop off, you know, single shots. But you know what I mean? It's it's ridiculous. So I've actually tried... I think I, I tried to leave it out of my map. So I don't think I really use the pistol at all. Um, <laughs> which, you know, I mean, it's interesting that the shotgun, you know, I use a lot. The pistol I don't use. Uh, 
AR2 I like a lot. The SMG has a very annoying it's, it's sound. It's a level design question as well, though, isn't it? Like, if, if you give the player a pistol and then put a bunch of enemies at long range across the other end of the map, then you're forcing the player to use that strategy. Yeah. So um, it's something like, just don't, don't put your enemies so far away when the player only has a pistol and uh, yeah, exactly. kind of solve some of that. But yeah, there's always definitely. like, you know, as you go through the map, there's going to be situations where enemies are far away and then if the player chooses to pistol snipe them, there's really not much you can do about it. <laughs> it's true. Um, I tend to, I was going to do, I'm doing, thinking about doing a series to look at each different uh, type of enemy in the game and what the optimum usage of that enemy is, you know, with regards yeah. to, for, for example, using ranges, like at what range should an SMG combat be at or an AR2 combat you see what I mean um, mm. just to sort of give I mean I think you can end up I think they call it pixel hunting is the, is the term right um, yeah. where you're using the pistol and you're there like a million miles away and there's a tiny cluster of pixels which is a uh, you know <laughs> which is yeah, a totally. um, so the hunter fight um, what are your thoughts on the hunter fight <laughs> the, the problem with this fight is that I just RPG'd them yes <laughs> Basically, um, it's a tough problem because you give the player an RPG crate to kill the chopper, and there's nothing you can do to stop them from just reloading on RPGs after the fight's over. Weapon strip, weapon strip. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit heavy-handed. Um, I mean, I will say that I, I actually forgot I had it. <laughs> I forgot I had the uh, the <laughs> RPG at, at, at the first time I played this. Without it, this fight is is really hard. Um, yeah, it's it's you know. And there's something that's, I'm going to bring up in a second, which is um, which which just drove me nuts when I first played this. Um, which is that I, you know, that I didn't, I forgot I had the RPG. Fair enough, my bad. I I had a big old fight with the first two hunters in what is a reasonably limited space. Although it's probably about the right sort of shape and size for a hunter arena. Um, I'll just die, Very right? Cool. Um, and um, the the problem is that. Once I'd finally beaten these two hunters, what did I get rewarded by? I got rewarded by two more hunters! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam does this a lot. It's like, you know, you've just literally gotten through this huge battle, and then suddenly he throws more at you, and it's just like, oh, give me a break! You know? <laughs> My reward should be, you know, a quite. I've now mastered this area. I am, the, you know, the king of the world. Um, and, um, and yeah. Just. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and every single time you move into a new area, it's just like, oh, God, you're killing me. Like here, you know, I've just done a big battle, and he throws three combine at you. Um, and to me, this area should have been completely empty and should have been like a restocking area. And I'm talking about the area just outside from the hunter battle. Um, yeah, yeah. Darren, I, I so you know pacing, where I am. I think you're right. There is a bit of a pacing issue here. But I think it's fun to fight some hunters in that area. Perhaps it's too many, and I agree that you should have a, a respite period first. Yeah. We just had a big arena fight with the chopper, so jumping straight into another arena fight so quickly is maybe a bit off. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I think I think I... perhaps meeting those. Um, so there's a bunch of rebels in here at the start, isn't there? So perhaps if you meet those, restock. They give you some story. I don't know, whatever. Blah blah blah. We're here to wash our underwear. Whatever they're doing. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then if if then the two hunters knock down the doors. Yeah. And then that was it. I think that could have worked a bit better. Yeah. I mean, I do have to yeah. say that um, I find character scripting uh, with dialogue and audio and all that kind of thing by far the most the most complex thing to do in the Source Engine. Yeah, totally. You know, building levels and all that kind of stuff, and and you know, making combat and and scripting AI movement and that kind of stuff is all fine. But the minute I get to um, the minute I get to trying to get an... Im I mean, Alex is easy because it's just the citizens for some reason I have a problem with uh, trying to get them to do what I want is uh, is, is yeah. bloody difficult. So I totally understand, you know, that creating those sort of story moments is is something that if you can avoid it as a, de as a, as a developer, you know, you will do. Uh, or I will do. <laughs> okay, because I'm lazy. Um, you know, and hence yeah, my. It's it, tough. I, I agree. It is, is super annoying to try and yeah. do some of that stuff. I'm terrible at scripting as well. I find it difficult to do just about anything. <laughs> um, you might recall but, uh, in I, my. I think yeah. it is part of the DNA of Half Life, and that it really helps with the story, which I think, again, is what I think is lacking the most in this release. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there's. Um, I just. Uh, there's probably a really. 
straightforward way of doing it. I just, well, not a straightforward way of doing it, but uh, I just have never worked out how to get the citizens to talk. I can get Alex to talk, fine, <laughs> um, but I can never get the citizens to talk. Okay, yeah. so got the grav gun, which may, always makes me happy because grav gun is what makes Half Life Two, in my opinion. Without yes, it. I'm so glad it's in here. I was a bit worried the first time I played it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the. F the, the, without the grav gun, you're not doing it right in my opinion. <laughs> but that's just me. Um, I understand the you know people's love of Half Life One. Um, I just think that the real benefit of Half Life Two. God, I'm getting it. Oh no, I'm not on God mode. I'm not going to die at all. Here I am panicking. Um, the, um, I always think that the you know the beauty of Half Life Two is the grav gun and the ability to manipulate your environment to your your advantage, right? To create cover. Okay. Um, yeah. and to use your surroundings as weapons um, and without the grav gun it really loses something in my opinion yeah I agree that's I think strange the, the I didn't way think Sam gives you the grav gun is a bit boring in here though I always find that um, if there's a weapon just lying in a corridor for you to pick up I always find that a bit anticlimactic like yes. getting a new weapon should be like a really exciting thing yes and uh, in most maps it's just kind of you pick it up off the floor. <laughs> Do you know what's interesting? Well, uh, Why have I hit a dead end? Where's the exit? How odd. I think there's a door behind you somewhere, isn't there? Oh, I dropped into this area, didn't I? That's why. I thought that was the way I came in. Um, <laughs> what's really interesting is the... Um, is uh, I've had conversations recently with people and I'm saying, like, you know, why didn't you put the gravity gun in? And they're like, well, story-wise, I can't justify it because there's only one in the entire I hate universe. That answer. I hate it. <laughs> it's like, you know, I can't, you know, there, there's only one grav gun available in the universe and it's, you know, and the player isn't supposed to be Gordon, so he can't have it. And it's like, uh, yes, fair enough from a story perspective, fine, but from a gameplay perspective, you've basically just. Yeah, that's going too far. That's where story hurts gameplay and yeah. that's where you need to. Really you basically look at what just, you're saying. You've just missed out half of you know half of the entire game basically by removing the gravity gun. Um, anyway, so there you go. But I mean, you know, everyone to themselves. That's a whole discussion. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We've got we've got a while. <laughs> we can have those discussions. It's fine. Um, the zombies. But, yes, zombies. Now. As we said earlier, zombies, the gameplay wise, is designed around trying to close down your space. You know, they're trying to get this, they're constantly advancing, trying to close you down. Um, this is done quite well in this area, in my opinion. You know, it's it's yeah, kind I of agree. a kind of a pokey area, and it certainly brings out the um, the panicky kind of feel. And I, I think he definitely has a better handle on zombie combat than he does on on combine combat, so to speak. Um, and uh, I didn't dislike this. Um, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I really like this area too. I think it's a great design for zombies. The only thing, and again, it comes down to story again. I'm starting to sound like a broken record. Is that <laughs> this feels like this feels like uh, the designers like we've had we've had a whole bunch of combine fights. Now we need something different. There go zombies. Yes. Boom! Suddenly zombies, and there's no real uh, explanation or kind of reason why zombies are here apart from. The player wants something different to do. So, <laughs> essentially, what you would have liked to have seen was a head crab canister somewhere. <laughs> or, or just any, something, <laughs> anything. <laughs> so, I mean, it's interesting that um, the... Uh, Sorry to interrupt you. No, uh, no, what I would have liked is, um, in the areas with Combine, if there were like grates in the floor where you could look down into the sewers and see the zombies there. To and sort of like, give hmm. you a foreshadow. Exactly. I feel like this area could have been combined into the area we've already been in. Gotcha. Uh, in a way that makes it feel more uh, kind of connected. Hmm. Yeah. Um, he does do some of that looping, and what's interesting, I was gonna, I, as one of the points I picked up on is that he loops, but he doesn't allow you to go back, sort of, and, and uh, actually open the loop. You know, like here, like yeah, you, you'll yeah, see in a minute what I'm looking at. There's a few doors, and they're all locked. And, and normally, what I would do is, is when the player reaches that future area, he can unlock that door and realize and go back through and go, oh, I'm back here again. And it's kind of yeah. a nice little payoff that that, that really. Yeah, I felt that some some of that was. Uh, I I agree with you, but I think some of that that specifically here was just to keep the player moving forwards. Mm. Uh, because like this door here, I think is locked, right? Yes, absolutely. And, um, if you could open it, there's a possibility to play. The player could just walk completely the wrong way and go back. Um, yes. You're, uh, yeah. Okay. I understand. I mean, um, you know, most players, I think, are going to realise that's back the way they came. But 
as we were talking about earlier, some players do very silly things. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And I mean, Philip, especially. Um, <laughs> whenever whenever <laughs> Philip plays one of my mods, I'm looking at him and I'm always watching him going, oh my God. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's some nice little looping. So we get to see back through the grate again that we that we that we in the area with the um, barnacles we were just in. Um, totally. The... Um, yeah, the look and feel of this area is, 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 you know, we're sort of in sewers territory now. Um, mm. Which is fine, apart from that it doesn't really feel like a sewer, you know. I mean, there's some pipes around the walls and stuff like that, but there's no real... Yeah. There's no peak pipes kind of leaking out into the air sewer, you know what I mean? It's it's just, it's very odd. Um. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes back to the point I was making earlier about it never really feels like a real place. Yeah. There's, there's elements here and there of, like, this is what this place is supposed to be. Yeah. Like you get you get the idea oh, yeah. that the area above the combine is like some kind of industrial like factory or something, but it never really feels right or real. Yeah. It just lacks it lacks uh, a I don't know some kind of overriding visual style which says this is a factory. Yeah, gotcha. it just feels like gameplay space with like factory textures on it. <laughs> that's that's exactly what it is. The um and I, I think I think the same thing here. Like it's it's meant to be a sewer, but it it's a gameplay space with sewer textures on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean. So here I am on the other side of the door, and I can't open it. And I'm like, oh, I want to just for the sheer completeness. I want to go back through. I want to go back through and, and be where I was. Um, yeah. Just for that payoff. Um, one interesting thing you were just saying, which which brought up in my head, um, was about um, they feel like gameplay spaces that have just got textures on, right? Um, mm. So, <laughs> from a gameplay perspective, in my opinion, you should design a map around the NPCs that you're fighting, okay? Because and, and design the map to get the best out of the NPCs that you are fighting. Um, lots of people build yeah. maps to look like a factory, for example, and then put NPCs into them. Uh, to me, that's wrong, and that does not get the best out of the, the NPCs you have. The trick is is to build NPC spaces which get the best out of the NPCs first, and then disguise them to look like something else, and you know what I mean? To, to try and... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I just think in this instance, in this map, uh, the disguising it part kind of didn't quite work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. Um, and it is, it's, sometimes it's really tough because, you know, you've got a great idea and you've done it in dev textures and it looks brilliant and it plays brilliantly and you're like, how could I justify this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I totally, I um, <laughs> it's like the... Um, that's why I tend to always end up in underground spaces like sewers and mines and stuff like that because then you can do... 3D movement in all in all in all directions. You know, you can go yeah. up, down, left, yeah. right, whatever, and you can justify these really weird, you know, gigantic spaces. Um, okay, so I'm now dropped into another arena, which is Combine, and um, it's a, a sort of a point of no return, and the, the action kicks off. And you know, I've got how many? We got we got one, two, three. Is it just three? Four. Uh, so we've got four Combine. And some rooms. I love being on God mode because you can just ignore them and wander around, and <laughs> it feels like a big kind of a big thing, like mi middle finger in space. And actually, if you leave them long enough, they actually start killing each other, like as in blowing up barrels and <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, they're, they're almost like Keystone cops in a way. <laughs> you know what I mean? This sort of bumbling idiots that will just kill themselves. And and yeah. I think that is doing the combine a bit of a disservice. You know, I think these are these are. These are dedicated troops, you know. These are these are crack crack squads of of, of troops that, um, that 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 deserve to, to be given slightly tactical thought, you know. Don't don't yeah. run up to the player toe to toe. You want to stand back at the end at the exit and and cover it, you know, and make sure the player can't move through. Yeah, I, um, I think that's another area where like um like game design trumps reality, isn't it? Where like most of the enemies in Half Life Two are completely implausible. For any kind of <laughs> actual combat scenario like the the turrets and the hopper mines like what on earth are the combine thinking yeah. they're fun there's lots of interesting gameplay to be had around them and but in how an actual invasion scenario like, what? and what are the chances that you know that the um the gravity gun would work so well with the hopper mines that it would actually convert it to work <laughs> yes. you know to ignore you completely um but it's fine you have to suspend some disbelief um totally. The Interestingly, I think yeah. this area here, you have to drop down into it, so it's like a... No, 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 uh, there's stairs. A push here. I don't think it used to be like that. In the original version of the level, I think you could walk back up. 
and I think I made a, some comment about it saying like it's a shame uh, you can backtrack here yeah, yeah, yeah gotcha kill the combine one at a time in a corridor so I think he uh, might have added that push there I, oh. I don't know I might be misremembering just because of you maybe oh. I like to think so no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we are offering a service to the public um okay so um this is another one and, and this kind of suffers from the same thing that you were just mentioning which is the area where you move out to the airboat um which is uh that you get downstairs and once again the combine come rush in and you know or, or rush down anyway and, and abseil off the roof i like the use of abseiling it's great it's a it's a brilliant way to introduce the combine he, he overuses it a little but Oh, see, they just blew themselves up with their own grenade once you catch up <laughs> on the stream. They're, they're useless. Um, so, um, but the problem with this is that the player can always duck back up these stairs again and just kill the combine as they come up the stairs. Um, yeah. And once again, it would have probably been better to drop you into into the area. Um, but I think the I think the the lack of diversity in, in enemies as well is a bit of an issue. Uh, yeah, it's all combine soldiers and a couple of hunters all the way through. You know, there's no kind of turrets. There's no, you know, there's no, there's, there's no real diversity in, in what you're doing. So, I think I would have actually preferred no combat here at all and just have the airboat yeah. be a nice kind of relaxing payoff at the end. Perhaps one thing actually that comes to mind is that there was no music in this entire map when I was playing. That's true. I noticed oh, really? That. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, that's true. There's no true. combat music, there's no intro music. Then, you know, when you find the airboat here, there should be some nice tune playing, like, hmm. congratulations. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's... Let's pause. Weird. Let's pause for a moment and, and reflect on the first map as we, <laughs> as we head on to the <laughs> airboat section. So, um, I think that what's interesting as well, you saying that, is about rewarding the player, right? How do you, how do you reward the player and say, good job, you're awesome. You know, I mean, I honestly think that games have a responsibility to make the player feel awesome. You know, that's why I play it. You know, I want to stand at the end of it and just go, yes, come on. Um, and I don't think we get this here. There's not really much reward at all. I mean, the airboat is a is a is a a nice way to end the first map, if I remember correctly. When it was only one map, it was a nice way, kind of, you know, and you shoot off and you know, uh, yeah, on, yeah. On, on your adventures. Um, but the uh, the interesting thing is that it's it's not really um, uh, that yeah. There's at no point do you really get a sort of a triumphant moment or anything like that. I don't know. And it, I mean, but I mean, there's a lot of maps where you don't get that. Um, yeah. I think visual payoffs are very good. You know, when you walk out and there's a huge vista or something like that with a you know yeah, a, gra a great view, um, and you feel sort of king of the world, so to speak. You know, like the bit in Half Life in Episode Two when you come out of the mine. And you get that amazing yeah, view with great. the, you know, yeah. and, and you know, you've you've basically you've sort of clawed your way up from the earth, sort of thing, and you finally, you know, come out. It's a bit like in Skyrim when you come out of any of the dungeons, and it always gives you this amazing vista when you come out of the dungeon, you know, and you feel like king of the world, you know, sort of thing. It's great. Yeah, that's great. And again, like here we are, broken record time again. If mm. if the map had more of a story, <laughs> yeah, then I think you could use that as well. So like after a big fight, um. And like the thing is, the fights have no context because there's no story. They're yeah. just fighting combine. Like if you were, if you had it in your head, like right, I'm pushing towards the objective, you know, whatever that may be. Uh, yeah. Some f facility, whatever it is. Like you can you can put that in the player's head, like right, you're fighting for this reason to get to this place. Yes. And uh, yes. The payoff um, is getting to that place. Yes. And or finding the, out what's in there and like what's the next thing. Right? Yeah. I mean, it could be map. it could be something as simple as you know Alex is in danger or whatever you know what I mean or whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah. But at least you yeah. get that kind of closed loop. Um, oh, I hate the airboat. I'm terrible at driving it. Um, <laughs> it's you know looking back, it is a glitchy piece of crap. <laughs> Um, I think it made people sick when Half Life Two first came out. <laughs> really? like, oh god, I can't imagine this. Can you imagine this with VR? You know what I mean? Now they've got <laughs> VR. <in it. laughs> oh, it must be painful. Right? Okay. The sick bags ready. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. I'm trying to hit this. Trying to hit imagine this crate. Like a, an add-on the Oculus Rift was literally like a sick bag, <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like a horse's feed bag. You know? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Um, okay, so I'm loading up on map two now. Um, the uh, I I don't excellent airboat piloting here. <laughs> it's just I'm essentially <laughs> just bouncing off the walls until I end up where I'm supposed to be. And I mean I think I think there is a bit about that in the fact that you know if you if you're gonna do an airboat section, make it big. 
you know make it big and give it nice curved corners so that you can ramp the corners and you know and, and do all that fun stuff totally. it, re- it really does pay off to to have a nice large area and and i think with the episode two engine large areas aren't a problem you know i mean i think there's a there's a feeling that, that the the source engine can't handle big areas i don't think that's true um if you look at a lot of the official maps there's some pretty sizable maps going on and it handles it all pretty well um, you just have to really pre-plan a lot of that stuff, like otherwise you're going to overload. Yes, it's it's very easy to overload the engine in large areas, but as long as you pre pre pre-plan it well, <laughs> and uh, you know think about your visibility and everything, then yeah, uh, yeah you can make some very large areas. Mm. Um, okay, so now we're into map two, and map two is for me is where I think you know there were some frustrating moments in map one, but I think in fact map two it goes into overdrive. I'm just like oh, it's another <laughs> arena. Oh, it's another you know another twenty combine. Oh god, and um, you know I think I think you get kind of weapon fatigue after a while. Like, I'm so tired of hearing this shotgun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean look at this guy. This guy just ran up. I was standing here. Just look. They all just run up right next to me. You can't see what I'm doing. But essentially, when you move into that arena. All of them just run to a specific point in the arena and stand there for about a second or two before they realise, oh, there's a guy there, and they run over and kill you, you know? Um, <laughs> I should it, probably shoot that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> Perhaps Scallion. Um, a lot of the... Uh, oh, look, it's a... Yeah. Uh, a lot of the... Yeah, see, there's about 20 Combine in this first area. It's just, oh, my God. Um, I, I guess the point is... That I'm, and I'm actually designing maps at the moment that I'm trying to uh, um, avoid this trap or pitfall that we're moving into, which is there seems to be a thing of to make this map more difficult I will add more enemies. You know? Yeah. I, more enemies increase difficulty. I don't think that's true. Because we all know how to dance around em- enemies in a combat arena like this to avoid damage. I mean, anybody who's played Half-Life 2 enough will, you know, uh, will become a bit of a master at it. And um, there's really not much challenge there at all. To me, it's 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 using the um, uh, the construction of the map, the environment, in combination with bad guys and other elements such as barnacles and you know and and, and turrets and stuff like that to create yeah. the most complete, the the most challenging scenario possible. Yeah, I agree. I mean, again, this arena kind of suffers from the same problem as the last map, where it's a fun fight. But it's just all the same. It's like just enemies rush in, you mm. kill them. More enemies rush in, you kill them. Mm. But, and there's no real like interesting like there's no spice. And by spice, I mean like scripting to you know enhance the sense of uh, danger and uh, people hunting you. Yes. Uh, I think like like combine soldiers, they just run into the arena. And while the arena is well built, it's interesting to fight in. There's lots of areas you can run around, different line, mm. lines of sight, and all that stuff. That's all great. But there's just the introductions are just completely missing. Like the yes. enemy just runs in. There's no yeah, there's no context given to it or, or anything like totally. that. And I think I think the other interesting thing is Half Life Two games, you are always on the run from the combine. The combine are, 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 are will arrive at various points apart from when you hit the street war section when you're kind of, you know, the tide turns and you start heading you know, heading towards the citadel. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for the most part the combine are kind of introduced to areas because they are they're they're chasing you. You know, or like in episode two well, one and two when you've got the data packet, you know? And they and they're then after you. Yeah. Which is your uh, your MacGuffin, if you like, as they call it in movies. Um and um uh the uh, so here because we don't have any justification of why we're here and what we're doing essentially the combine just seem to be these poor hapless people who are <laughs> who are kind of you know <laughs> caught in this terrible situation where this 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 demon is coming for them you know <laughs> sort of stuck there with with no other option but to to desperately try and kill it um yeah. y- you know there's I, mean, the I, I don't really have an issue with the amount of enemies he's throwing at you uh, it's just it's literally just the presentation of it which is most of the problems see this me. is yeah this is where we're gonna have a round because um <laughs> yes <laughs> because <happening>. um <laughs> i think that um the challenge or or a good designer of maps should get as much gameplay out of as fewer bad guys as possible yeah i agree um so to throw 15 or 10 combine at the player in one arena to me just seems very lazy yeah, well, 
it's lazy in that they literally just spawn in the arena and then come after you. So I, I agree that it's lazy in that way, but the fact that there are waves of enemies, if they've been introduced in, in interesting ways, i.e. drop ships, breaking down doors, like throwing grenades to break barricades and then storming through, anything mm -hmm. like that for each wave would make each one feel different yeah. and uh, unique, which is what this combat space really needs, I think. Uh, okay. I, I, I somewhat see your point. <laughs> um, Again, it's, it's, the, it's the scripting spice that's missing from the combat. Yeah, um, but for example, if, if, if by this point now we were onto using the AR2, you would need far less bad guys. Because the amount of damage they could deal to you would be, you know what I mean, much more significant. And you would have to be... Yeah. I, th I guess the problem is here is that the player doesn't have to be careful. There are so many crates everywhere that you can you can you can restock whenever you need to. You're not going to die. I mean, I'm on god mode, fine, fair enough. So I'm not really paying too much attention to the amount of damage I'm taking, but because I'm not taking any. But um, but you see what I mean? There's this sort of. I, th I think it's it's a relatively easy map to play through, and the, and the player doesn't need to take any time to to, to hesitate to 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 worry about whether they're going to survive or not. Um, yeah, it does promote a Rambo mentality. Exactly, sure. and and yeah. and I think part of the beauty of really really good Half-Life 2 maps is because you've got so many different potential ways of approaching a situation. And I think I talked about this. I did a I did a playthrough on um, Abraham Lee's um, uh, um, uh, what Ravenholm map, right? Um, right, yeah, yeah. And what he does so well in that map is is to provide the player with lots of different options. You know, here's here you've got the gravity gun. Here's a crate. Here's a you know here's a I don't know here's a here's a yeah. buzz saw. Here's a bunch of other stuff. Um, and and it gives the player the ability to plan what they want to do and then to execute the plan. You know, and that's really fun in my opinion is to be able to look at a situation and say right, how am I going to deal with this? I've got a whole bunch of different options. What do I think is going to be the best way? And that really creates replayability. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this area you're in here kind of does that in a way. You can look over the edge and see the Combine soldiers down in the pit and they haven't seen you yet, so you can kind of pre-plan your assault a bit. Gotcha, yeah. And then the um, the scanner comes along and that kind of messes Kicks up your off. plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, mean, I, I do agree that if you... Uh, that's something I really like to do in maps, like show the player an area, let them devise a plan, and then execute it and see how it goes. And then and, uh, if try they and incorporate fail, start again. as many different elements into that area as possible that the player has to kind of take into account. Yeah. So gotcha. that you get divergent playstyles basically. Like if 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 you watch ten people's demos playing through a map and they all play through it the same way, then I think that's a problem with the map. Agreed. It just means that there's there's one way to do it best and like any deviation is actually like frowned upon. Yeah. And it's actually interesting because um, I think a lot of sort of beginner mappers um, start off with the idea that they have an idea of what they want the player to do. You know, it's like I want you, I want the player to jump onto this and then realize that this is happening and then jump onto this. And I, I think I can see that in a lot of my early maps, um, like daylight. Mm. There's certain areas there where I, I very much force the player into doing something because there's really no other. I just leave them no other options at all. Um, yeah. And and I think it's um, I think that as you as you as you build more and you get more feedback from players and stuff, you start to realize that. Um, that's not a good way to go. You know what I mean? That, that allowing the player to have lots of different options and stuff like that, and and to let the player deal with situations the way that they want to deal with them, is is definitely far more fun and far more rewarding. Yeah, I agree. I, I haven't looked at the chat at all. Have you been looking at the? <laughs> I've been reading the chat. Have I've you? Been, yeah. what, what's what's going on on the chat? <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm busy. Let's, let's I'm busy playing chat. this game. Yeah. If definitely. anyone, yeah, if chat has any questions either about the level or you want to ask me or Jim anything, feel free to ask questions in chat, and I, I am reading it. Let's see if there's any. Everyone's just saying that vehicle sections in Half-Life Two are bad. <laughs> <laughs> in Half-Life Two, maybe. Um, Half-Life. I was I actually. Yeah. Oh, here we go. One was great. Yes, yeah, the whole under the radar and all that stuff is just amazing. It's so well done, and I think it's. It, I think the vehicle's a lot better. You know, you can get a lot more out of it. Yeah, although I, di I did enjoy driving along the coast in the buggy in Half Life Two and like stopping at all the different little houses to find out what was in them. Yeah, it was like little gameplay nuggets strewn throughout the coast. That was really cool. 
it was like completely optional like you could just drive right by it if you wanted to yeah and do you know what was interesting was I um, played well I think it was interesting was, um, I was um, <laughs> I was you know the, the the current mapping challenge right between Mapcore and um, Planet Philip and I was I was mucking around yeah. and thinking well what kind of area could I do um, differently you know like a, re, a, re, a reimagining as they put it of an area and I thought well you know um, what if you could have um, uh, what's it called highway what, what's it called highway highway damn it highway I can't 17. remember the number highway 17 with um, but with episode 2 kind of you know post um, uh, you know post citadel explosion y type type scenario you know is it what if you went back to highway 17 with the with the muscle car and, yeah, and that kind of thing pretty cool. yeah so it was so I was mucking around and started building out um, the coast kind of environment uh, and it's actually not that hard to build it's actually when you look at the maps and you sort of take a piece of it and stuff and start playing around it's actually quite easy to recreate the whole Highway 17 coast kind of environment um, mm. I'm not going to do it because I haven't got time and I'm busy working on my own projects but if anyone else wants to do it I think that would be really cool and I'd like to play okay, that Chat wants us to argue more apparently you're not being critical enough and I'm <laughs> agreeing with everything you're saying <laughs> <laughs> damn it um, right okay um, well I mean it's, it's, it's interesting the okay, so this piece here, and once again, we come across a situation where um, you have one style of gameplay, which is the rockets coming from the APC, mixed with combine soldiers attacking you as well. And this is very much going back to the 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 chopper, you know, thing. Um, and uh, to me, I think that's not very good because I think that the player should be able to. Uh, I think I think you should focus on one style of gameplay at a time. So I think I've talked about this before in some of my other videos is whenever you, a player enters an area you are presenting them with a particular gameplay challenge and that gameplay challenge theoretically is as simple as playing Space Invaders. There are simple rules to that particular gameplay and the best thing about Half-Life 2 is that that gameplay changes all the way through so you're constantly presented with a new game to play you know um, sometimes that game is, is a puzzle type game sometimes it's combat sometimes it's you know all kinds of stuff and it, it's down at the very very micro level of pick up this crate and get the stuff out of it without losing it or something like that you know or yeah. you remember that bit in I, I obviously I did that analysis of um, of, of Freeman Pontifax and uh, chapter and, and there's that bit with the it's like the, the goo pool and the zombies keep rising and it's like a never ending you can blow up the zombies as long as you want to kind of section there's all sorts of different rules of gameplay going on and when you start mixing two different sets of gameplays together i.e. a combat arena with combine plus uh, trying to blow up an APC that's trying to fire rockets at you I think you start getting into problems there and I think it becomes perhaps annoying for me. Yeah, it really depends on what you're mixing together because I, in this particular instance I think the, the APC and the combine yeah, it can get a bit annoying because all your attention is on the APC and there's always guys just whittling down your health while you're trying to do that and it can be very annoying. Mm. But I think like combine APC mixed with just about anything else would be fine, like mixed with zombies, mixed with, uh, uh, hop, I don't know, hopper mines, turrets, whatever, it'd be fine. But so what is it? The combine soldiers can actually run towards you and uh, kind of mess up what you're trying to do can be really annoying. Well, zombies can run but towards in, you though. Yeah, but they're really slow. And you can take them out. <laughs> See, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna pick holes in everything you say just to uh, just to entertain everybody. Um, <laughs> I think zombies work just about everywhere, though. You can you can put a zombie in just about any gameplay situation, and it'll work great. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> That's um, uh, yeah. No, I get that. This um, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, no, you're wrong. Um, the um. <laughs> So one thing I did do uh, when I came through this area here, which was, you know, there's like a million hopper mines, and to be honest, it's just annoying. Um, you know, there are too many here. You should just be using hopper mines as, as, as in combination with other things. So to me, hop, hopper mines are, are a really great thing to use. Um, zombies, you know, just yeah, just yeah. out there. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> You're obsessed with zombies, what is it? Um, I'm, the, I'm telling you, that <laughs> zombies go anyway. Um, the uh, the yeah, I, I think that they should be used in combination with other things or to create a particular type of gameplay. I think the problem is once you've got the um, once you've got the gravity gun, the, the, the mines become, you know, uh, almost too you know too easy to deal with. They're not really much of a challenge. It just simply yeah, slows you slows you down a bit. 
Yeah, when you get the gravity gun, the, the mines aren't so much to damage you, they're for you to use against something else. Yes! Right? And in this particular case, there's nothing to use them on. You just have to move them all out of the way, which gets really boring after a while. I mean, one or two, just to like show the player, hey, there are mines here, you should move them. And then after that, have some zombies <laughs> coming out. <laughs> <laughs> So, but one one something, thing is, but in, to shoot them with, you know. But no, that's not true because in Half Life Two, um, you get the gravity gun way before you encounter a hopper mine. Hopper mine doesn't encounter; it doesn't come up until um, until you're back in the city again after after Nova Prospect. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, yeah. so there's no point when Valve ever intended you to to encounter hopper mines um, without the gravity gun. So the whole intention of the gameplay is, is to take these things and use them for your own benefit. I mean, if you hide them underneath something or just around a corner, then then obviously they can become quite dangerous. The one thing you can do is you can combine them with like turrets to prevent the player from getting from just running headlong at a turret and gravity yeah. gunning it away, um, which I think we've seen sometimes. But anyway, are, are they, are, is the chat a little bit more happy now? Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Have they, have they calmed down a little bit? Um, okay, so here we go again, entering yet another combat arena. Here come a million combine. Hold your butts. Um, this particular arena doesn't work for me at all. Look at that! There's like 30 of them. That <laughs> this is just really, really annoying, <laughs> in my opinion. I mean, um, yeah, I know. Sorry, so I am in the, I'm in the long, um, the long kind of gully. Um, where you get a hunter come at you and about 30 combine. Um, yeah, yeah I, I see it now. Yeah. And they're like, most of them are... Uh, I think that's too many all at once. Oh, that good really is. lord, it's crazy. <laughs> and I mean, I'm once again, I'm god mode, so I don't care, but at the same time, you can see what's happening in the fact that the player gets pinned back really towards the back of the arena and you don't really get to use... Um, um, you know, you've got to be a fairly brave player just to charge straight at them and try and get past them, if you see what I mean. Um, I think yeah, the other I thing is, yeah, go on. This, this arena set up brilliantly to drop in reinforcements from above, like mm. have the combine jump in from the sides, rappel down. Yeah. But Sam has just kind of thrown everything at you all at once. <laughs> I think um, more waves would have been great, and you know maybe some zombies. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um, Got to say it now. Yeah, um, and I think I think while there are some physics props around. Um, I think it would have been, you know, this would have been a good place to really put in some 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 interesting physics props to be able to, you know, to spice up the combat a bit or to, yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. I mean, one thing you can do, I mean, everyone who knows who's played Hunterville is that, and I think there's an achievement, isn't there, which is like the return to sender or something like that, where basically uh, the yeah. hunter fires its 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 fletchlet at you and you catch it at the box and then throw it back at it and and you know and cause damage, yeah, yeah. Um, which is a great, you know, it's a great bit of gameplay um, and it's some, definitely something. Um, that you know, that that would have been nice to see. Yeah. Oh, and again, it's it's a nice arena here. You've got two gullies down the side in a central kind of area, so there's lots of places to kind of break line of sight and run around. But you just can't use it because everything just bum rushes you. Right at the start. <laughs> exactly. So you just end up just stuck in a corner, just praying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, forgive the sound of London in the background. Uh, I live on a major road, so we get a lot of uh, fire engines and uh, things like that <laughs> coming through. Um, it's, it's not so bad. I haven't really noticed it. Okay, so. good. Um, the yeah, so so here we are, kind of. So I'm out of the gully now, and I'm moving along the top area. There's nothing really to do here. It's just a connecting area to get me to the next section. Um, I do like you can see like the combine structure in the distance. This is what the yes. map needed more of, like context for where you're going. Yes, definitely. Like that thing just like dominates the skyline at the end of the. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I guess a valley here, but uh, I do like that a lot. But it's never really picked out by any kind of story elements, like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's on the right track, though. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I mean, he's definitely picked up on that from the, you know, from the main game of having the citadel as a point of reference. Um, yeah, totally. And okay, so now we're entering a sort of a, a very, very concrete, basic kind of area, um, which is uh, oh crap. Um, which sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to kill barnacles with barrels at the moment. <laughs> um, you'll see in a moment. Um, and. Uh, yeah, for the next section, it really got quite basic. Um, there we go. Um, and the, I think this was the section. Do you remember with the yellow door? And you couldn't, you couldn't remember yeah, seeing it. Yeah, that yellow door really needed picking out more. Yeah. 
Um, so we're going to do a big loop around. And one thing I noticed when I played this, and I'm fine, I'm on God mode, but you can actually just leg it past all of these all of these zombies. There's no gating yeah. to stop you. You can just pretty much run all the way around and ignore all of them until I mean, and just literally dodge them. Get right the way through this area, apart from maybe the fast zombies who will follow you out. But you know, literally, you kill those, and I'm I'm through already, and I've now and. Once you get to the next section, you've got some combine to deal with, and you know you need to slow down a bit. But you can you can zip through that entire area, um, and pretty much ignore them all. And you can do it as well on the way back. Um, there is yeah, the combine soldiers just kind of run past you, don't they? Yeah. If you, if you run fast enough, it's like, I think they're set on like some kind of assault point, and they just completely ignore you until they get there. Yes. <laughs> um, Something like that. Or or it's it's actually I think it might be as as simple as having a um, a waypoint. Like a path corner gotcha. or a yeah, yeah, yeah. path track, um, which you can do. It's a way of, of bringing enemies into a back, uh, into an area, but they are going to ignore absolutely everything until they get there. Um, okay, so I'm past the the combine, and I'm now. I would in have liked the combine soldiers to attack the zombies, like, and have you kind of walk in on that here. I think having a three way fight is always is always brilliant. Um, a three way yeah. fight always works really really well. Um, yeah. Even a four way fight with sort of ant lion zombies combine and you. Can be even more interesting, <laughs> although perhaps a then bit over the this top. area would feel more natural because you'd have the choice to just run, and it would feel more natural because the two enemies are fighting, and you can just kind of run through. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Um, maybe that would feel better. Yeah, I mean, I think there is the section in in Half Life One, isn't there, when you finally reach the surface and you leg it out into this courtyard, and there's this massive battle going on, and you sort of <laughs> and you run through and dive down a grate in the middle of the battle. Do you remember? And, oh, down, down, and you die, you kind of dive back yeah. down into the uh, it, yeah, but it works really well. It's a really great idea. Okay, so I've just hit the button and I've opened up our our our, our yeah. Well, let, let's door. talk about that orange door for a second because I know both times when I played this match the and yesterday, door. yes, I just. I just I, I hit the button and the door opened. I had no idea where that door was. Yeah, <laughs> it really needs like it needs a big bold kind of "you are here" sign almost on it. Yeah, like, gotcha. hey, this area is important. You should remember it. But it's like there's no lighting in there. There's nothing. Yeah, it really needs just like a big, you know, huge spotlight aimed at the door. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it the really needs more, uh, yeah, and once you've hit the button and you come back out, the alarm goes off, and you know, and it's supposed to be, you know, they they know you're coming, and it's all pretty serious. Um, but when you move back out into this sort of section outside, just outside the button room, there's like five or yeah. six combine, and they all just run all the way down this this area, and come straight up to you, and it's just like, why aren't you staying down there? Why are you putting, you know, you're gonna die if you've got no sense of self-preservation at all. Um, yeah. I think that's a you can set that as a in the uh, map, can't you? Is there like you can set their behavior like aggressive, where they'll just run straight at you while firing? I think. In the map, what do you mean? In the um. Uh, in the editor, sorry, in the entity. Yes, what in a, and if I'm you were using sure a scripted like a, schedule or, or an AI uh, schedule kind of uh, yeah, entity. Yeah. Um, like maybe that's a mistake here because yeah, they just they just run straight. Well, at I you. mean, I think if you just plonk a combine into into a map, it will do that. It will run straight up to you and it will just it will start blasting away at you at point blank range. Right, mm. that's what that's its sort of its normal behaviour, uh, unless you tell it to do otherwise, uh, or, or unless you separate it. And this is what I'm saying is that you get a lot better results from combine if you keep them away from the player, because then they have to constantly use cover and they move and they you know, uh, rather than uh, having them be able to come straight up to the player toe to toe. And obviously, yeah. using the assault system. Um, is 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 really quite useful as well if you want them to advance on a position. Um, personally, I prefer playing through defended positions. But anyway, uh, but obviously there's there's two different lots of different styles of play there with regards to combat. So I've just gone through the nondescript yellow door, and I'm now into the uh, <laughs> into the large zombie kind of the crazy zombie room, as I like to call it. Um, yeah, th this area is great. I love this part. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea. Um, I don't think it's very Put together particularly well. First of all, why are there a billion zombies in this room? You know, there's no context given at all. It's just simply there it is. Watching the combine and the zombies duke it out and picking a side essentially is quite fun. Yeah, even like he's got the chair here with all the beers. He's like, he knows exactly what this area is about. Yeah, <laughs> it totally. He's going to sit up here, have a drink, and just watch the fight. <laughs> and it does. I mean, that totally echoes. Oh, I've just realised the the. Oh, hang on. Is that is that a thing? Yes, there is a grenade on the floor, 
at the end by the chair and the beer, right? Oh no, it isn't. No, I thought it was a a never-ending grenade, but it isn't. Like a grenade that you could constantly <laughs> go and pick up, but it isn't. Um, that would have been an interesting thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I so far when I've played this, I have always sided with with the zombies. I have to say, <laughs> with this battle, it's it's always been about the zombies for me um, because I want the combine to but it's, die. It's just nice. It's again, it's another point of divergence for different players. Like you can pick a side and help yeah. them out, or yeah. you can just I sit love and watch. Stuff. And you know, everyone plays it differently. Yeah. Even though there's not much gameplay here, it's just more like a, a spectator sport almost. Just. But I think this hey, is this sit back is and relax for a yeah, second. and it's this kind of thing. It's these kind of things which which really make you know the Half-Life 2 games a lot more interesting because a lot of shooters don't do this you know um, mm. it's it's not I mean if you play like Wolfenstein uh, the more recent one or something like that it's very very linear gameplay you know it's it's walk through shoot the bad guys um, and, uh, and 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 I think this this kind of stuff is really important and it, while it may not be combat combat you know or, or even gameplay it adds so much to a map it, it makes it such a more fun and, and enjoyable experience yeah, it's it's like one of those rewards you're talking about. A little like, how do you reward the player? I'd call this a reward. Definitely. Even though it's not like giving the player like more equipment or, or a vista or anything like that, it's providing entertainment as a reward. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, the other thing is the uh, there is I couldn't find a way to drop down from that level without hurting myself into the lower mm. arena, and I don't know if there is a way. If anyone's found a way of dropping down from the higher level and without hitting yeah, yourself think, which is bad I don't think there is. you shouldn't be that able could to be a problem if you're on low health yeah, yeah I mean you should no but you that once again it's a bane that rule of the player should never be damaged you know what I mean unless they can help it uh, or, or be able to help help whatever I can't talk anymore I've been talking for too long <laughs> <laughs> okay so now we're on to another big fight with uh, the uh, what's it called uh, the the gunship right yeah, gunship fight. Right. Which is, you know, I mean, uh, the, uh, I, I'm not going to moan too much about the gunship fight because it's actually oh, yeah. done. Oh, okay, good. That's good. So, I mean, I think <laughs> the the indoory outdoory uh, style of the actual place where the the, the rockets are held quite works quite well, um, in my opinion. That was my major point. Was that you know the um, you can camp, you know, by the rocket thing, um, but yeah. I don't think it necessarily. Um, there's only so long you can string out these fights, you know? Um, I mean, I think there's yeah. a lesson to be learned maybe from Nova Prospect in that as you arrive, you, you move through an area with the, um, with, the, with the gunship shooting at you and eventually end up at an arena, um, which I think there's something yeah. to be learned there. Anyway, sorry, go for it. <laughs> okay, so, well, first of all, let's, I'll agree with you in saying that I do like the fact that there's rockets scattered all around this area. Uh, it's actually, this area was... One of the things I used while designing uh, Lost at Sea. Oh, really? Uh, Planet Philip. Yeah, it's like having the rockets scattered everywhere and letting the player run around wherever they wanted. Uh, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, yeah However, that's as, as soon as I saw the rocket bin, uh, I just stayed by that and just shot it. I, mean, yes. I didn't find the arena very fun because you can just stand in this area you're in now, yep. uh, use Bye. the beams for cover, and just shoot the gunship. And it was just kind of. You're just completely static, standing in one place. Yes, um, and and so how? So it's interesting. So you, how do we get yeah, around on, that on. though? How do we get? How do we? How do you do it without a rocket bin? Yeah, well, the problem is that without a rocket bin, it's completely possible for the player to run out of rockets, right? Yeah. That's that's the main reason it's there because if there's no rocket bin, there is a situation where you can't kill the gunship. Yes. <laughs> so how do you? So so so, so come on, yeah. smart ass. What you got? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Well, I, I think this area suffers from the problem that you get to the rocket bin, uh, and there's uh, you can still fight the gunship. Sorry, what am I trying to say? Uh, yeah, you you don't need to fight the gunship until you get to the rocket bin. You can just run up here and yes. kill it straight away. Gotcha. Uh, I really like. Actually, you make a great point with uh, Nova Prospect, where there's a couple of rockets lying around in the area that you can walk through. So you're fighting it as you're moving along, with, as yeah. you're moving along until you get to the arena at the very end. Where and I think it's it's also true of so the chopper. Forcing of you to move the chopper fight as well. I mean, the chopper's on your ass for for hours before you eventually get to an arena and kill it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think that's great. <laughs> and it's it's funny that, that that whenever you get these fights, mappers tend to just chuck you in an arena, give you the bad guy, and that's it. You know. Yeah. So we've like, learned I, I really something. like the idea of getting the player to move around and having 
the reason why they're moving is because they keep running out of rocket ammo and the target is still alive. Yes. But at some point, you do have to give them a rocket bin. Yes. You know, otherwise they can't kill it. <laughs> yes, but I think you need to get them to jump through hoops before that point, right? Exactly, yeah, that's that's the point I'm trying to make Great. very badly. <laughs> <laughs> so we have reached a conclusion. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Yeah, no, it all comes back to the reason I enjoy, especially older games, and Half-Life 2 falls into that category now, mm. I think. Like, yeah, I think so. I'm a huge Quake fan, I'm a huge Half-Life fan, and the thing that all these older games have in common is that the emphasis on movement in combat which I find super enjoyable, whereas a lot, not all, but a lot of modern shooter games are just kind of hide in, co hide in cover, peek out, shoot an enemy, mm. get hit, get back in cover, regen, pop out again. Do you it's think, very, very static and dull. Do you think that's because of the rise of m sort of multiplayer gaming and the, and the style of multiplayer gaming um, that, that that seems to sort of emulate? I think it's a factor. Um, I think it's more down to the fact that just the, the trend is going more and more like realism like shooters used to be all about just big crazy weapons going around completely weird environments like <laughs> yeah like yeah i used and to love slowly moved on to like you know had world war Two, and now we've got modern warfare and now things mm. are going kind of uh, near future yeah uh, and it's it's funny actually we're kind of going full circle we're going to go near future and maybe then it's going to go far future and then we're going to be back to crazy arenas with silly weapons yeah, i hope so <laughs> i mean i i mean uh I'm, i i love doom originally you know with the secret areas I mean the secret areas were the whole point for playing Doom in my opinion you know those great big areas where huge great sections of the map would suddenly start rising and you know what I mean and create a, a whole new sort of area yeah, uh, yeah, or the, really floor, cool. the floor would just drop away and yeah and I think that yeah. you could probably get away with that in an abstract area like the combine kind of citadel you know type environment oh, totally. um, but, but yeah. people don't do it which is a shame um, now let's talk about this combine citadel type area because I think it's not very good um, <laughs> um, I have to agree with you there. I Sorry, think, chat, I'm agreeing. <laughs> yes, um, I think that the look of it is fine. You know, he's really caught the you know the the architectural style and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Gameplay once again. Let's sling a, th a thousand combine at the player and see what happens, um, and basically just you know have them deal with it. Um, there's really not too much of a uh, of a challenge going on. I do. I mean, the aesthetically, I like the uh, the gunship sort of you know holder. Yeah, I love that gunship thing. loading bay. That's super. It's cool. great. Really, really clever. Yeah. Um, definitely want to see more of that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, gameplay-wise, it's pretty much just the same thing with a slightly different the aesthetic style. I had with this, I mean, this intro area is okay. Yeah. The main issue I had is that the um, the drop into like the final area of the map, you can just kind of camp there and kill everything. Oh yeah, no, just gotcha. Kind of sitting on a ledge, like pop out, shoot someone, go back, and yeah. again, it's 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 kind of falls into that modern military shooter problem where you just sit in cover and peek out and shoot. And gotcha. Yeah, I didn't do that and I'm now getting my... Like if, I w if I didn't have god mode on, I'd be I'd be dead right now. <laughs> I just <laughs> dropped into that arena and there's like, once again, 30 combines just, just rush in and oh, there's like three of them. And once again, it, it's creating difficulty by simply adding more bad guys and throwing more bad guys at the player. And I, I that's, that's not that's not using, you know, your brain at all in my opinion. Sorry, yeah, I think I like design wise. Yeah, there are way too many combined soldiers here. It's a bit nuts. You know, I think that there's plenty of, uh, of things to do. So, might have a bit of a disturbance. I've just got a knock at the door. So, we're going to see what's going on. We've been expecting a delivery for a few days. <laughs> Okay. So if people, if I'll, you hear people move to chat, while you exactly. Were, if you hear you people moving a table into my house, then 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 that's what that is. Um, <laughs> I'm probably wrong. The uh, Okay, just a second. So moving on, and then you know, pretty much we're at the ending, right? There's a few stray combine towards the end, um, which offer really no, no more challenge. Um, I mean, one thing I will say about this area is that one thing I really liked about this citadel environment in Half-Life 2 is that some of it was just kind of big chasms, yes. with, like you on one side and the combine on the other. Yes. You had this big firefight. Whereas here, it's just kind of they can just run straight at you. Once again, yeah, it's just it's just that same combine. Um, you know, like not not getting the best out of the combine at all. You know, in my opinion. So there you go. Um, and then we hit the button, and it, uh, it the the teleporter thing works, and then you drop down these areas, and you're done. So there isn't really a final battle, and there isn't really a conclusion or anything like that, which is a bit frustrating too. Yeah. Again, going back to the old story, of being a bit light. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so there you go. We pulled it apart, and <laughs> and sorry, Sam. I hope you're all right with this. <laughs> um, so I, th I thought we were very uh, 
uh, what's the word? M measured? Productive. Productive, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Okay. So, um... Yeah, the ending is a bit of a letdown. I mean, it's just like massive difficulty spike. Yes. To, to fade to black. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I think it's, um... Yeah, and it's, 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 as once again, it's sort of, I think this is why I picked it, because I, I, I like the look of it. He can, you know, Sam can obviously map well, and I think he, you know, it's, it's the, uh, uh, and it's not unfun to play it necessarily, you know. It's just the same style of gameplay over and over. Yeah, and over I just again. found it very wearing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because uh, I think part of it was just, yeah, you're right. A lot of the areas just felt the same. Just walk into an area, fight enemy, move to next area, fight enemy, and yeah. there's there's yeah. a pacing issue there where there's not enough kind of downtime between big fights, and also the fact just the complete lack of any real coherent story hurts it there as well because the player doesn't really have a goal apart from let's play more of the level <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um, okay so um, I noticed that on the um, the, the, the thread on Run Shoot Think Live um, is it Run Shoot Think Live or One Think Shoot Live whatever um, <laughs> I can never remember it I, I should probably like know that I mean <laughs> uh, for me personally it's probably the other way around the way I play um, but <laughs> um uh, that I noticed that the thread had closed. I couldn't add any more comments to it, and I just wonder where I could ask Philip if he's listening, which I'm sure he is, to add more uh, if he could unlock the comments. And it would be nice to see people's comments on on there as well. Uh, any other thoughts that they want to share? And um, yes. I hope that this has been useful. We've talked about an awful lot of things and covered an awful lot of stuff. What's it, what's going to be interesting is next month is whether I can do this again without talking about the same old crap. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully I can find a mod that has you know enough of difference of gameplay maybe far more puzzle orientated or something like that that would then you know uh, allow for sort of a different kind of analysis and I don't know who's going to yeah, join absolutely. me but whoever if there's people out there that would like to join me for this and, and certainly feel that they've got stuff that they can um, they can contribute please let me know and um, I will pick names from a hat <laughs> but yeah, I want to thank sorry. thank you Darren for joining me it's been really fun and um, yeah no problem it, it was it was good yeah we'll uh, we'll, we'll definitely we'll definitely have another argument soon okay although not much <laughs> of an argument apparently yeah yeah I, I ended up just uh, well actually um, most of your points I agree with so yeah but I'll have to find a level that I love and you hate and then uh, <laughs> exactly maybe Minerva is it I don't oh know, god hate Minerva? well I mean it's funny actually watching Ong play it last week and, um, and, and I, it just took forever to get through I mean I was watching him for about three and a half hours um, I yeah, don't yeah. hate Minerva I, I find I think the lack of a gravity gun really pisses me off so to speak I'm not sure if I can swear on here but I did um, that's the only map I can get around that on just purely because it's so good in every other area <laughs> uh, yeah yeah I guess I mean I, I was uh, watching watching Ankh play through it I certainly uh, picked up on things that I wasn't overly happy about but as an overall piece of work it's amazing so and it's hard to argue with something of such quality so no I'm going to pick something else and I mean the interesting thing as well is that I can't I don't feel I can necessarily pick competition entries for Vils because obviously of the limited time frame there's always going to be you know um, yeah, totally. but I mean I'd like to hear people's opinions do you think that, that an analysing a Vil competition entry is, 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 is valid in this way or not or do you feel that it should be really people that have had a long time to focus in you know and to, and to I mean obviously this is a, a complete release so uh, not part of that but yeah let me know and, uh, and and we can pick also just let me know if you've got any suggestions for maps that we should go through that would be great and uh, and we can take a look thanks sure. mate speak to you oh, look at that bang on time 2.30 how good are we oh look at that we're pros I know it's amazing <laughs> alright okay take care everyone have a great Saturday goodbye chat